Hello everyone, you're tuned in to another episode of How Not to K-Pop. I'm Sean and Henry. Hello everyone, how's it going? Not too groovy. Not too groovy? Yeah, Why we're not? still locked down, man. Yes. It's lame. I, re- I remember when lockdown was meant to close, or was meant to finish, I don't remember. When it was yeah, finished. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's been that long. <laughs> oh my god, wow. And... I remember it was just one state that was uh, going into lockdown. Suddenly it spread to like every other state in Australia. Yeah. And cases, then back to two states. Because cases spread. Yeah. Cases, Suddenly, cases. you know, it would be two cases here, two cases there. Then the next day, 20. It's like, oh dear. Well, <laughs> well I mean, good news is that uh, once uh, our state, Victoria, reaches 70% double dose, we'll be open, slowly opening up as well. So we you won't be staying dose? in. Did you get your second dose? Uh, yeah, I got my second dose two days ago. I oh, got nice. got the side effects of them, you know, a bit of a headache and a, a runny nose, uh, probably that night and the next day, so yesterday. But uh, other, other than that, I am going pretty good. Yeah, I can't tell. The, like, you're fine now. Yeah. Yeah, the the, the weird thing is uh, the point where they put the needle in, even, even now, it's still a bit sore. That's mm. one thing that uh, I found the same. Like last time I got my first dose, same deal. It was sore. It got sore. It was sore for like a week. I guess it's an extra big needle. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sorry no, for no. anyone scared of needles, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, uh, Sean, have you had your second dose yet? I'm getting it tomorrow as of this recording. Okay. So uh, my before I got my second dose, uh, my mom told me that it hurt, which made mm. no sense because... Uh, you know, they use a baby needle. It's a needle. Um, Toughen up, mum. Come on. <laughs> so the, the baby needle's not as uh, thick as your typical needle. So it's mm. not meant to hurt as much. Mm. And they don't they don't change the kind of needle. They don't change the amount that they put in. Nothing. It's exactly the same. Uh, so I go in there, and when they do it, you could, I I felt pain, and it was quite it's quite a quite a uh, puncture of a of a pain, which very surprised very much surprised me. Uh, the doctor said it was to do with the fact that it, it, that uh, you are more aware of what's happening and what to expect because yes. you've had it done before. Yes, that's why. Yeah, that's why your mind has made it so that you're gonna feel it much more. Uh, my mom calls bullshit on that, but <laughs> that's what the doctor <laughs> says. So uh, what I'm saying is, Sean, uh, it might hurt. <laughs> your second dose. It's better than Squid Game. Uh, I just finished it the other day. And uh, mm. I would not want to be in a single one of those games because uh, a needle is much better than a gunshot. <laughs> Squid, Squid Game is huge right now. I've seen so, there are so many YouTube videos out and about. Mm. I remember a Roblox uh, game, well, Roblox being a game, and inside they had the Squid Game. Oh, they created it. a Squid Game in Roblox. That's yeah, bad. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's like uh, four or five stages, but it's not. Uh, yeah. It's still you know more to come. But yeah, Squid Game, hella, hella famous. I haven't even seen it. Yeah, Netflix uh, released a statement saying it was a couple weeks ago, so it's a little outdated, but they were saying it's on track to be the most viewed Netflix original of all time, which is incredible mm. because it's not in English. Oh. It's Korean, fully Oh, Korean. okay. Yes, yes. So when I first heard of Squid Game, I didn't think it was some sort of uh, a series, a you know, television series or whatever mm. series it is. I thought it was just one of those, you know, those, uh, uh, uh those stupid TikTok, uh, things. Uh, oh, like a pod. trendy dance or something. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was one of those trendy <laughs> things that kids do. Nowadays. Like, uh, like cinnamon challenge or, or something yeah. like that. Right. What's the, what's the one that got you to eat soap? Is it soap? Soap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was one. I don't know about it, but Probably. I'm sure there was one. There was Ice Bucket Challenge, but that was for ALS Foundation, which is really cool. That was cool. Yeah. Um, Yeah, there's been a few over the years. I thought it was something like that. Turns out it's not, which is cool. Mm. So uh, I haven't watched it only because, you know, one of the tags said horror. I don't exactly like watching horror. So, Sean, to anyone who's not actually seen Squid Game, what is it? It is... Some down and out people, for whatever reason, they might be from a rough part of town or a gangster, whatever their problem is, it's always a financial problem uh, to do with debt. 
and they all get gathered together in this place by someone and they're told by that someone that if they play these games they've selected for them and they win they will win a whole bunch of money to the equivalent of 100 million won uh per player oh okay and it starts uh... with 400 and something players so that is billions of won which is millions of dollars uh us or english currency yeah Right, right, okay. Um, and what happens if you lose? You die. <laughs> if you fail one of the games, uh, one of the sort of underlings will come up to you and shoot you. That's the most... Uh, uh, it just doesn't seem dramatic enough. Uh, <laughs> what, was it, what's the point of the tag being horror? Is it? Is it horror? Only so far as it's a pretty horrible concept you know for for example is saw a horror in your opinion henry uh see the thing is with saw i see for some reason i see it more as gore and uh mm. and i don't like that so i stay i steer yeah. clear from to me it like plays that. out a little more like a thriller like for example a famous mm. one would be seven or um to choose a korean example uh i saw the devil which right. is sort of a crime thriller so i see squid game more as a thriller but i totally understand the horror part because it is gory and people Mm. find that horrible so yeah horror would have been would it be interesting or i don't know if it's spoiler or anything not that i've seen it but could there also be one competitor in the squid game who's actively sabotaging the rest because they are some psychopath psychopath (laughs) maybe that could be a part of it because they, uh, it's like they, they, they won. They won. They survived. They survived the past 18 Squid Games, but it's destroyed their mind. So every time they come back, they want to, they want to not feel alone. So they, he or she tries to destroy everyone else's minds. You, you should Squid quickly game. type that up and send it off to Netflix. They might make that. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> I, I might have to give it a check then. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for sure, it's worth watching. I totally understand the hype. Uh, is it slightly overhyped? A little bit. Uh, it has its problems. It was slightly predictable, but overall mm. quite good. An interesting part of its popularity is no doubt the fact that you don't have to watch it in Korean. You can watch an English dub. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, how's the how, wait, how's the dub? Horrible, shocking. I lasted ten <laughs> seconds. For a multitude of reasons. Uh, The main thing... Well, first off, Henry, are you a dub or sub guy when it comes to anything foreign? Like, do you prefer subtitles with the original Uh, voices of the actors or the dub of an English voice actor? In general, I would stick with a sub because the... the, I guess the way it was made, you know, uh, they embody it with the original much better. Whereas... And a good example is, like, classic or 1980s 70s hong kong action flicks and you've got uh a very very bad foreign english dub like i will kill you and then the, the, the guy's mouth is still moving but the the guy's dubbing is already done and it just seems so horrible and weird but it, it's a trope but it's just funny and it takes becomes... you out of it unless <laughs> it's there's very specific circumstances where you sort of touched on it with 70s Hong Kong action movies or mm. Kung Fu movies. Yeah. It helps them sometimes because you recontextualize it and you rewatch it as a comedy instead of an action film or instead of a mm. tense thriller, you regain a new appreciation for it through the horrible dub because it adds comedy to it or it yeah. adds entertainment to it. Yeah. Uh, but that's very rare. And for Squid Game, completely inappropriate. Like, it's not the type <laughs> of content you can recontextualize into a comedy. No way is yeah. this a comedy. Yeah. So, do you, is it, how's a dub bad? Is it like, um, like, you've as got- you said, it's out of sync. Oh, okay. For me, the cringiest think. part was, and they've done this with Japanese horrors that get the Hollywood treatment, such as Ring, okay. where they change the names. And that really bothers me. So the main person's name has been changed to Jack. 
for no reason. Okay. Just okay. it's a common <laughs> white white <laughs> English name, I guess. Well, wait, hold up, hold up. Uh, do you think that's all right versus them saying Chaku? <laughs> a fluent, fluent yeah. English uh, voice actor going Chaku. Yeah, <laughs> but, definitely. Do you think that's a bit- <laughs> right, because that's that's obviously a little bit racist, honestly. Yeah. If a white English actor was to try and attempt some sort of Korean accent over yeah. the English script, that would be quite bad and uh, discriminatory. But <laughs> it's just the dub just isn't right, never will be right. As in, I can't think of an actual fix for it. Mm. And I totally understand why a dub may be essential for some people who actually can't see that well, so they can't mm. read the subtitles. They need to rely on their ears to hear what's you, going on. Which but is pretty s- interesting because, mm. uh, sorry to bother in, but yep. I do know of people who prefer a dub over a sub, even though a dub might not, might sound bad, simply because subs, you, when you read the sub, the subs are generally at the bottom of the screen and that right. kind of takes you away from what you're meant to be watching the movie ah, the series, yeah, yeah. whatever exactly so you can miss action you can miss comedy you can miss a lot of things if you're if you're focused on the subs which is just words at the bottom of the it screen it just doesn't take that long it doesn't take that long to read mm. those subs so that's where i disagree i guess it's because i've spent years watching subbed content but mm. i just cannot fathom that argument i think what it's really a case of is this generation cannot sit down and watch one screen for more than five minutes. They don't have an attention span anymore. So well, what, when people say they're watching Netflix, sure, Netflix is on, but they're on their mm. phone, they're doing chores, cleaning up, they're doing all this other stuff. Netflix is on in the background for a lot of consumers of Netflix content. So something like Squid Game comes along and it's... Originally in Korean. Or bad dub. Or bad dub. I just find it interesting and I think that people are sacrificing quality by watching the dub. Just on purpose, just so that they don't have to sit down and just watch it. (laughs) Because they can't anymore. They just Mm -hmm. can't. We don't have the attention span anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that I guess that makes sense as well. I mean, that's one of the reasons. One of the reasons why podcast is popular. Um, mm. it, it, like, if, and if they do have to watch something, they like to watch something that's really short. Another reason why TikTok is so popular. They're really short clips. Exactly, so. and I do respect that as I guess an art form. Technically, if you're able to create something entertaining that only goes for fifteen seconds, that mm. is really impressive. I'm amazed at that. But I don't want this kind of content like Squid Game to go away where it's long form content. It's an hour episodes and you do have to watch it to fully enjoy it. Well, I mean, Squid Game, even now, I look, I still I haven't seen Squid Game. It is very popular right now. It would be very interesting to actually get comments in regards to what other people think, other people who have seen Squid Game, what they think of it. Have they seen a dub and a sub version? And if they have a preference between the two, that would be very interesting. I'd love to. Yeah, we'll link, we'll put a link in the description to our WordPress where you're able to comment because WordPress is like a blog and it has all the links to all of our podcast episodes. Well, let me ask you this. If Squid Game, can Squid Game have a really good dub? I'm going to say no. No? I just don't think it can. Oh, right. That's another point that Mm. something that is, let's say, French might have a slightly better dub in terms of being in sync. It might have slightly better voice acting because the language, English is derived from French a little bit. Not entirely, but a little bit. So you have this natural flow that almost matches French a little Mm. bit. So I think you can end up with a much better product but Korean is a different beast. It's derived mm. from different places. You can so. you can almost say that like with languages like Spanish, uh, yeah. French, Italian, uh, because they use English letter. There's English letters in them, so you can kind of guess if someone if la champagne. All right, so sing champagne there. We can probably use a sentence that has the word champagne in there in English. Seems to be about right. And then as you mentioned with like Korean or Japanese or uh, Chinese. They can say one word, and it could mean 
something that's a bit longer than that. And the right? mouth doesn't move in the same way. There's all this exactly. different stuff going on. It just doesn't work. It falls apart when you try that's to what, English over that. Yeah, yeah. Trying to con- trying to correct with mouthing is too uh, is not possible unless you use CGI, which is uh, yeah, <laughs> right. let's leave that out for now. Let's that's, leave that out for but now. But that's also disastrous because then you've got yeah. the uncanny valley. Yeah, it's Mm-mm. there's no way. There's just no but, way. <laughs> but um, with I think with the right approach, you can probably get a really good dub for something like Squid Game. Um, the From what I've seen, at least uh, there's only a small fraction of, I mean, I mean anime uh, in English dub that I've seen that is really good. One of them is Cowboy Bebop. So Steve Bloom, who voices the main character Spike Spiegel, he was hmm. not a voice actor when he started. In fact, he didn't know how to voice act. But the way he approached the character, the way that his fellow uh, voice actors approached their characters was that they weren't going to do it as just a voice. Instead, they would become the character. They acted. They used their voice and acted. They became that character. And in, in, in the end, it's like, like no different from acting, except it limited their movements to just their voice. Whereas uh, sometimes you watch other uh, uh, English dubs and you can feel like the people who are dubbing are trying to copy trying to copy the uh, original. I see your point. Uh, and so the yeah, actors yeah. are sort of being directed to follow the script to a T and that mm. comes off a little bit fake or not as acted as well as if it came out naturally through them acting as that character on the screen. Exactly. So mm. if you if you look at one episode with Spike Spiegel in subversion, and another episode of a uh, same episode, but just in dub, you'll find that the for the Japanese version, uh, Spike Spiegel's a bit more comedic. Whereas if you then watch Steve Bloom doing his work as Spike Spiegel, it's suddenly it's it's much more like a hopeless romantic, like it's sad but a deep. little bit James Bondish, kind of, kind of. But it, it, it's like um, it's hard to say, but. It's something you really need to check out, but it shows that Mm. if you want a good dub, it's not about dubbing. It's not about the voice. It's about the person. It's about the story. It's about the the world that this uh, this anime in in this in this case Cowboy Bebop is situated in. So, for example, another one is Helsing, Uh, Helsing Ultimate. The voice, the voices, the voice acting were amazing in uh, Japanese. And when they did the English, it was even more amazing. And they, they loved it. And it suited it so well because they were embodying the characters with the voice. They're not trying to copy the Japanese. They were trying to embody the character. All right. And if they did that with Squid Game, I'm, I'm sure if they embodied the characters, the, the Korean people there, they'd probably be able to put out a pretty good English dub. It might, it might not be the best. It might not be better than the Korean original, of course. But I think... With the right mindset, the right uh, way to go about it, you could probably get a pretty good English dub for Squid Game. I think that's a missed opportunity overall, then. Yeah, you're right. I think you're Mm. totally right that it would have worked out so much better that way. They just didn't do it that way. And, oh, boy, do do not watch Squid Game in dub. It's just not right. (laughs) I will keep that in mind. I will watch Squid Game in uh, its original form with subs. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> let's move on to news so bts i mean they're always in the news but bts's v ended up in the news for sort of an interesting reason it was all to do with a lot ceo talking about the metaverse and this was at a conference called the metaverse nft forum in seoul and nfts we've actually discussed on the pod before I've forgotten what it is, but It's all to do with digital assets and digital ownership, so virtual assets, AR, VR, all of that stuff. And this CEO, No Jun-hyung of Lotte, Mm. he wants BTS's V to be the face of Lotte's metaverse world, which I imagine they're developing right now. Uh, Similar to Facebook are developing their own metaverse world as well. So, hold up. What what is this uh, metaverse that you're speaking about? The metaverse is, put simply, a digital universe. So, you can do everything you do on this earth in the virtual earth of the metaverse. 
and you can probably do so much more. And I mean everything, including the sort of boring stuff. Like potentially you could own a house, have a mortgage and pay taxes in this virtual world. That doesn't sound good. (laughs) I know. I know that's a terrible pitch. I'm just saying that this is how sort of realistic and serious these people are treating it. It's slightly different to a video game in that way where Mm. people are actually treating this as an extension of their lives. So people are talking about the metaverse as this is actually how we're going to exist. Uh, So we're going to be uploading our minds into this digital world. Ghost in the shell. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. it kind of like playing a an online game with hundreds, thousands, and of you, millions of other right, people and you together. take it way too far, and billions of people all over the world take it way too far, and it becomes their life, basically. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Well, you know, there's no reason why the future of humanity is in the digital world. You know, right. uh, the, the, when you're digitalized, you are technically immortal. You know, it is simply an evolution of technology that's getting us to this point, uh, which mm. arguably started with crypto, and it's just yeah. become so much more. Uh, AR, VR, all of that along the way is also making it possible to create so, this uh, metaverse. So to narrow it down, they want BTSV to be immortal. <laughs> well, they want him to be the face to attract people to this metaverse, which really speaks to the power of BTS right now that everyone's talking about them and everyone knows that if BTS gives something their blessing, there's enough people that will follow them to the ends of the earth and will, let's say BTS one day said, hey everyone, go eat apples. The increase in apple sales will be noticeable, 100%. That is their power. Okay, Uh, so basically, okay, he's the face of... So this is what Latte CEO is sort of pointing out, that we need to make these people, preferably BTSV, I think because he's beautiful, their face of this (laughs) whole concept, just so that more people know it, more people investigate it, more people invest in it, and we end up with this incredible metaverse for people to jack into and do what they want. That's just more about business, though, isn't it? They want them to buy their stuff. Using BTS V saying buy it, you know, isn't it? Sort of in that it is sort of a business decision, but mm-hmm. we need to look at the bigger picture and be like, well, this is just letting people know about this technology, which Lotte don't own, technically. Right. The metaverse is just a metaverse. Sure, Lotte might be developing one, but there's going to be a whole bunch of other ones. And the simple fact that they want to get the word out tells me that mm. this is pretty legit. And the metaverse isn't just one of those tiny little things that 10,000 people at best might look into. This is going to be big. It's going to be a really big part of our lives uh, in 10 years, I'd say. Maybe even five. A heavily expanded version of VR chat. And uh, advertisements will have the face of V uh, saying, buy McDonald's now. (laughs) (laughs) Buy, buy the Big Mac, buy the BTS uh, meal. Yeah, if you, you liked it in it real was? life, why not try it virtually? <laughs> yeah, it costs it costs you this much crypto or whatever, and uh, you actually don't get to eat it because it's digital. You just have it in your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the... oh my gosh! You spend entire days uh, chopping wood, just like in RuneScape, and then <laughs> you have a message that you're just bombarding everyone. 100 wood, 500 gold. 100 wood, 500 gold. <laughs> I'm, BT- I'm BTSV. Buy, buy our BTS yes. meal. And, uh, we're, we're right, it's all shortened, gold. so it's just letters. Everyone's like, B, BTS, M, C, 1. I'll give you a pickaxe. You can get started by chopping wood to get money. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, there's been okay. some drama. Okay. AOA are back in the news. AOA was, what, our first episode? Uh... I believe so, yes. Well, technically and our first episode was EXO, but... <laughs> <laughs> why'd, you, why'd you reveal that? It's one funny, day. But... It's in the dungeon. One day I'll unlock it. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> AOA, on. Minna, who we covered the whole Minna Jimin drama right. ages ago. Yeah, yeah. That was... That was Pretty oh, much a Jesus. year ago. Yeah. Wow. In and she is having problems with her sister now. 
Well, great. It would seem, unfortunately. Mm. So on October 6th, she uploaded all of these messages that she had with her sister on Kakao Talk. Yeah. And she captioned it, it's not enough that I have to suffer from Shin Jimin, <laughs> so AOA's Jimin, but now I have to suffer from my sister and talked about all how she, the sister basically took money from her and mm. withheld any sort of interest, any sort of financial gain she made from that loan, I guess you'd call it. Right. And then also pointed the finger at Minna saying she's evading taxes. Okay. The whole okay. thing's messy. The whole thing's yeah. ugly. So what what I'm guessing, or from what I'm reading, my guess is this. Um, <clears throat> let's say Minna makes this amount of money. Let's say a thousand bucks. If your income increase, if your income is greater than let's say five hundred, then the rest of it gets taxed. Okay, let's right. say that. And uh, in this case, we'll go. All right. In that case, how about uh, my thousand dollars that I get in? Half of it, so five hundred, I'll keep that will remain as income, and the rest will actually be put as something else, uh, so that it's not considered income. Right. Like, it'll go somewhere and it'll be considered some sort of asset or investment in another area. And yeah. then my sister, in this case, Mina's sister, will use that money to help. Well, in this case, what she's saying is that her sister's doing the this thing for Mina. And the rest of the money, the other 500, goes somewhere else. So it's not considered income. So that way, she doesn't, Mina doesn't get taxed. Okay? All right, sure. Um, and I don't know if it's true. But it just seems like this isn't what I'm guessing here. And... Now she's asking, all right, where's that money gone to? We're gone. Where's that money? The rest of the 500. And based on these messages that she's getting and pictures that uh, Mina's sister uh, has been showing, for example, a Maserati. <laughs> her, Mina's sister has a Maserati. And based, uh, based on what her sister's job is and whatnot, she can't afford any of that, but apparently she can. So Mina is assuming, or AOA's former AOA member Mina is assuming that the rest of the money that Mina had has been used by her sister. So this whole thing, putting finances or doing financial deals with the family, this is just another example of that being a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. keep money out of the family as much as you can, besides, you know, gifts, helping out if someone's mm. down. Uh, besides that kind of stuff, not loans, not tax this, loan that, you know, it's an ugly situation. It's a complicated situation. And it's just created this rift between Minna and her sister, clearly. It's not good for anyone when families are fighting. It's terrible. It sucks. It's, it's one of the reasons why uh, becoming a celebrity at a young age is very dangerous mm. for so many reasons. So, Are you thinking, yeah. like, the parents, they might mishandle your finances or they might take finances from you kind well, of thing? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, like, there's been news. Remember Britney Spears? Right, that uh, whole thing. Britney Spears. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you got something right. like that, right? That was You've slightly got... different due to her uh, mental health situation way mm. back when uh, sure. Jamie Spears, the father, did enter that whole... Right, but... Yeah, yeah. It, it is similar in that he took control of the finances and that's caused a rift between him and Brittany. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, other examples, while I don't have specific, uh, specific ones, but you can you can make an example where, uh, let's say I, I'm, I am, I'm 12 and I suddenly become a child star, I make a lot of money, but because I'm only 12, I can't exactly you have You don't have income. access, right. Exactly. Right. So it, gets, it goes to my parents. And then my parents start, uh, uh, they keep most of that money. And then when I become old enough, I can keep my income. But because my parents still handle everything, I have to try and wrestle it from them. And if they're not going to let me, well, I'm going to have to give up my name if it's a brand. I'm going to give up everything that I've done because they, my parents own it, not me. And I've had to start from scratch again. But my parents have all the money and all the things that should have been mine actually went to them. That's and they're the not thing. giving anything this to you. This is something you know? that... Minna earned, and mm. it's not for any other member of the family. They don't have a right to it. This is her personal gains, and that's exactly. really special and amazing. Good on her. So, mm. yeah, the whole thing's ugly. I just want to point out the fact that Minna's putting this all out there in public, not appropriate. 
this is a very private matter. I don't fully understand why. Do you know why she's uh, doing this? She, it's a bit... it, 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 to me, it seems like she's in need of an outlet to express her uh, frustrations. I mean, considering what she went through in AOA uh, with Jimin, it didn't seem like she didn't. It didn't seem like uh, Mina had much of like a shoulder to rest on. Uh, even now, it doesn't seem like there's necessarily a shoulder for her to rest on. Uh, and if she's not able to rest, she's gonna have to speak out. She's not. If she's if there's no one that she can talk to about it, then she's gonna have to say it out some other way. She needs to express that frustration. This is one of those ways, especially if you're limited with what you can do. But social media is so easy. So this is what I see. She's trying Look, to get maybe her problems uh, out. Maybe not. You know, maybe this is Minna trying to play the victim a little bit because mm -hmm. all this other information came out about the Minna Jimin beef and the Minna Jimin fights and yep. Jimin bullying her, blah, blah, blah. That Minna was low key harassing Jimin with text messages, and mm. that she had been Minna had been cheating, smoking, basically been behaving badly, basically behaving badly, and the whole thing sort of ended up making Minna look a little bit bad, not just mm. Jimin. Mm. So I wonder if this is her sort of maybe trying to get people on her side a little bit with that mm -hmm. whole fallout. I'm not sure. I have nothing to prove that. But I do wonder if that was her thought process in posting this online and making this public as sort of for people to sympathize with her or be like, poor Minna. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible as well. It, hard to say. Unless there's concrete evidence, uh, con unless there's some way to concretely prove all of it, both sides, either sides, whatever, at this point, it's mostly, what, speculation? Exactly. I yeah. have no evidence to say that. It just makes me wonder, whenever someone chooses to release such private information publicly, I always there wonder, might be what's agenda. the reason? Yeah, what's hidden, going hidden on? Agenda. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, if Minnow turns out to have been cheating and smoking, where smoking is not allowed, well, well, Minnow, that's pretty bad of you too. You know, that's pretty bad of you. Come on. But uh, in regards to the sister thing, it seems like Mina's sister's also pretty bad. I mean, yeah. Fair, that's <laughs> fair call. Yeah, going <laughs> off these allegations, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. If we suddenly have allegations that uh, Toa, Pak Toa, was cheating and smoking, well, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty, like, <laughs> Objectively, pretty those bad, are bad yeah. things to do. <laughs> those are bad things right. to do, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to a whole bunch of South Korean stuff that's been happening to do with COVID-19. You can't escape it, unfortunately, even though we're pretty much two years on from the first case. Mm, Almost. True. Happy yeah, anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, at the same time, it doesn't seem like there's as many things happening in, and like drama happening Fair. in the world, in the world of K-pop, because they're all busy staying at home trying to be safe. You know well, what I mean? Well, some, not all, like right. uh, Chae Jin Hyuk has been caught violating COVID-19 regulations and so he's stopping all activities and the story goes that on October 6th he went with an acquaintance to a bar that actually wasn't meant to be open uh, he had a misunderstanding of the rules he sort of thought it could be open till 10 p.m it couldn't be open at all actually mm. <laughs> okay uh, so basically he went to this bar with a friend <laughs> And that was uh, an idiot move, especially as someone in the celebrity space, in the media space. Agreed. And now agreed. he's had to step down and, and go on a reflection period, I guess you'd call it. Because <laughs> he was on a variety show called My Little Old Boy, which I actually yep. haven't seen. But it's on SBS, one of the major Korean TV channels. So this is bad. This sucks. Well, I mean, the guy was just a little bit irresponsible. He wasn't aware of... I think he has to take the L, though. I, I understand why he's taking the L. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. He does, he. It's his fault. Yeah, I mean, keeping no, keeping right. with TV. Uh, TVN, a drama they were filming, has had mm. to be shut down because a staff member tested positive, and this drama was or is featuring Nui Minhyun, Lee Jae Wook, and Oh My Girls Arin. 
Yep. Kind of a little bit nervous now because if that staff member was hanging around those people, potentially they'll get infected. So that's that's something mm. we're going to be looking at over the coming weeks. This all went down on October 6th as well. Mm. And also boy band Ace has had two cases with Ace's Jun now is tested positive and Ace's Chan most recently tested positive for COVID-19, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, we hope they recover, like, all the best to them. It's sad, this one. In this case, I feel like they didn't do anything overly wrong. So, Jun was with family, and unfortunately, one of the family members was positive, uh, yeah. and so, therefore, he became positive. And yeah. Chan, simply by being in the dorm with Jun seems to have contracted that seems to be what's going on well i mean that, that if anything that shows you how infectious covid-19 is right and it speaks to uh, how these k-pop idols are brought up they're brought up together which is a great thing that teaches teamwork and camaraderie and friendship but mm. it does mean they're in the same room generally i'd say pretty much 24/7 so, unfortunately, this kind of virus, it's just going to spread among them. It's just the way it is. It's tragic. I, I, have, I have a question for you. Uh, if you're in a K-pop group, Sean, and you get tested positive, right. now, would you be forced to isolate? And, and, and the people around you would have to be isolated as well. All right. Let's say, uh, so your family will need to be isolating. Okay. And your members will need to be isolating. Now, you have a choice. Either you isolate, it's not that you have a choice, but uh, are you meant to be isolating with your family or are you meant to be isolating with your group? That's my question. For me, it's a pretty simple case of where do you spend the majority of your time? Stay right there. Yeah. Unless you unless you live at a bar <laughs> or you live <laughs> or your, you your live family owns on the bar. a TV station or something. Don't. Your fa- it's... <laughs> So, so this is how it works. Your family owns a bar, and they decide to they decide to okay. leave, open it during this period. Uh, your K-pop members decide to go to the bar as well. They're all celebrating your birthday, and while you're at it, one of uh, you you had a call from one of your uh, fel- uh, friends, female friends from another K-pop group, and she happens to be filming just next door, okay. <laughs> and they all come together, and that is how you have COVID. <laughs> I don't know. Look that. As as kind of crazy as that sounds, that has happened. Real. People have caught it sort of that way by their neighbours throwing parties or just coming out to chat to their neighbours when they had a party the night before with someone who was positive. It's mm. that quick to infect. And so for me, very it's kind of the obvious case is to – my instinct is to go home and isolate there, which does mean with family and risking mm. – your family getting sick. But if your family's super kind of cautious and they isolate you properly, and I mean pretty much like that film Old Boy, just keeping him in the room <laughs> for, for years, no, for weeks, <laughs> well, whilst not, well, not camp you tackle outside. this virus, then yeah, should be okay. Uh, I, reckon, I, reckon, I reckon you should just camp outside, have a tent, and occasionally they'll, throw, they'll give you food <laughs> through a little hole in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> So old boy, yeah. but outside in a tent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, at least you're outside and uh, yeah. you're still free to go around the place. I mean, you just use the back door. And you can get some exercise out. in your backyard. That's, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a major problem in Seoul, at least. Everyone's living in these apartments and everyone's living in these Ooh. buildings and on top of yeah. each other. That, unfortunately, is just a recipe for disaster for various reasons. And COVID spreads in those places. It's really sad. And I can't wait for this virus to go away or to be at such a point where it's pretty much the flu. So we just get our shot. We deal with it. We work through it. Not too many deaths. It's very, very different compared to here in Australia where um, people actively go out without wearing masks (laughs) because of freedoms. (laughs) <laughs> because because beer <laughs> hanging yeah, out with mates I, hope, Party. I really hope other countries aren't looking at us and going why are they locked down still because it's pretty obvious to us like 
idiots are just breaking the rules constantly <laughs> and spreading it everywhere. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a weird it's a weird time to be living in. I mean, like I said, I don't know if I've said this before in the past, but I'm sure I've said it to I've said it to my cousin, I've said it to my dad, but I told them humanity is going to die not because of a pandemic, not because of nature, but because of human stupidity. That's really it. It's just. Some people is going to kill us. That's, that's it. That's the real pandemic or that's, that's the real, real epidemic. Yeah. Yeah. Darwin, where are you? What we need to do? <laughs> uh. That brings another episode of How Not to K-Pop to a close. If you enjoyed the show, did you, Henry? Uh, that was great. I loved it, man. Every every episode was amazing. Buy us a coffee then. Buymeacoffee.com slash how not to K-Pop. Follow our Instagram at Prod. I'm Sean. That's Henry. Hey, guys. And bye, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Till next time. It's been fun.